What's going on guys, it's Gizmodict here and today I'm going to show you how to install macOS 10.11 El Capitan on your Hackintosh PC. To make the installation drive, we are going to use a tool made by a member of the Insanely Mac forums who goes by the name of Chris1111. This tool will easily let you make your own El Capitan installation drive without much hassle. So first of all, you need the copy of OS 10.11 El Capitan Public Beta or Developer Preview. I can't list the links for these previews, but you can definitely find it by a quick Google search. Once you have downloaded your Developer Preview or the Public Beta, make sure to name it as Install OS 10 El Capitan Public Beta if you have the Public Beta or Install OS 10 10.11 developer beta if you have downloaded the developer beta. The tool will only work if you have respectively named your file. Now for the USB installation tool, you can grab it from the link given in the description box. You will have to make an account at insanelymac.com which is free by the way and the forums are also quite useful to fix various issues related to your Hackintosh PC. Once you have made your account, you can download the USB tool from the link given in the description of this video. This tool will only work on Mac OS. Now you need to prepare your USB drive which should be of at least 16 GB. Insert your USB drive into your Hackintosh or Mac and open the disk utility. Inside the disk utility, format your USB drive to Mac OS Extended Journal format and also make sure that you rename it to USB. Now run the app that you have downloaded from Insanely Mac and select the create a USB option. Click continue and select the USB drive that you just formatted and click OK. Click on format and soon you will see a new drive named installer. Now in the installation menu that follows, click continue and at the disk selection option, make sure that you choose the installer disk that we just created. Click continue and then select the appropriate option based on whether you have the public beta or the developer preview. And now in Clover, choose the option based on the BIOS of your system. I have a new UEFI BIOS in my motherboards and most of the recent motherboards do have a UEFI BIOS, hence I selected that option. Click on install and let the program do its work. It is going to stay stuck at running package scripts for quite some time because it has to copy all the installation files. Depending upon your drive speed, it can take anywhere between 10 to 30 minutes, so please be patient. Once it is done, close the installation dialog and run the Clover OS 10 El Capitan app again, but this time select the Clover post option. Click continue until you reach the selection screen. Here, before proceeding, click the standard install option at the bottom right corner and click on change install location. As you can see, this was trying to install the bootloader on my main OS drive, which we don't want. We want the bootloader on the USB drive. So instead of the main drive, select the USB installer and click continue. Now, select the Clover option based on your system and install it. Once it is done, you will see a new EFI partition created on your desktop. Open it and go to the KEXT folder, as shown in the video. Here, you can copy some basic kernel extensions like fake SMC and optional KEXT like Ethernet and Audio, which will help your system to boot. Make sure that you paste these KEXTs in 10.10, 10.11 and the other folder. You can also edit the conflict.plist file based on your system preferences if you face issues but the default file should work fine on a majority of systems. So your installation drive is now ready. Unmount the USB and insert it in a PC in which you would like to install the developer preview. Switch on your system and boot from the USB drive that you just created. You will be greeted with the Clover bootloader. Before we start installing, navigate down to Options, go to the DSDT Fix Mask and disable all the fixes. Wherever you see the plus sign, go to that option and press Enter to disable it. 
You can also add some kernel flags if you want to in case the installer does not boot up but my system works just fine out of the box so I will have to directly boot from the USB drive. Once you boot from the USB drive using Clover, you will see an Apple logo with the loading screen and if all goes well, you will be greeted with the installation screen. Click continue and here you need to format your drive first. So go to utilities, go to disk utilities and select the drive that you want to format and install the OS on. You need to format the drive to Mac OS X extended journal format and you can also see it on the screen right now. Follow these instructions and format your drive. Once it is done, you will be able to see your drive on the installation screen. Here, click on install and wait for the installer to complete. It roughly takes anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes. Once the installation is done, you will see the restart screen. Click on restart. Once your system boots up, again boot from your installation USB drive. Again you will be greeted with the Clover install screen and you need to go to the options and disable all the fixes like we did earlier. Once it is done, use the appropriate kernel extensions for your system and this time boot from the drive in which you have installed the OS X which in my case is the drive named El Capitan. If all goes well, you will be greeted with the setup screen of OS X. Set up your preferences from here and once you are done, you will be greeted with the El Capitan desktop screen. If you go into about this Mac, you can see that it is Mac OS 10.11 and it is working fine without any issues. I also updated the developer preview from the App Store and it worked flawlessly. The last thing remaining is to install the bootloader on this drive so that you don't have to use your USB every time you boot up. For that, we need to copy the EFI contents from the USB to the El Capitan drive. So for that, Download the EFI mounter tool which is linked in the description below and run it. Here you will get a few options on which disk to mount from. Generally the USB drive is the last option. So in my case it is disk 5. Click continue and you will see an EFI drive mounted. Copy the contents of this drive and save it on your desktop. Now remove the USB and run EFI mounter again and this time choose your boot drive. The disk name will be mentioned by the app which in my case is disk2. Select it and continue. Now you will see another EFI partition. Paste the contents in this folder and now you can boot from your drive without using the USB. Also we will edit the config file here so that you don't have to disable all the fixes every time we boot the system. So open the config file and under DSDT fixes change all the values from true to false. This will disable all the fixes by default and you can boot your system directly. You can also type in your kernel flags here so that you don't have to enter every time you boot your system. In case you want to install any kernel extensions, you can use kext installer which again will be linked in the video's description. So this is how you install the Mac OS X El Capitan developer preview on your Hackintosh. I am using it since a week or so and it has been working great on my system. I hope this video helped you out and in case you have any questions, please post them in the comments. I will be making another video when the final version of OS 10.11 comes out, so make sure to be subscribed for that. Please like the video if you liked it and as I said, for more Hackintosh content, be subscribed to the channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.